picked up by Andre from oh, three quarters. Oh. Corks at T. He hit it. He had his eyes on the prize and let it fly. What's going on, all you Tanimals? This is another edition of the Tanimonial Sports Show, proudly a part of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcasting Network and broadcasting live on twitch.tv as we do every Tuesday evening, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am your host, Brian Tan, and with me as always, my, the I don't even know what to do. The, <laughs> the news that I was given before we went on live is so mind-boggling that I just have <laughs> nothing left. So I'll just say the, uh, the 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 Rick Wild thing, Vaughn, to my Jake Taylor, Jackson Law, Jay Law. How the hell are you, my friend? I'm doing good, man. I just realized that my Prime uh, subscription for the for the channel ended. So that's what I was doing real quick. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was hurrying, logging into my Twitch, so that's how <laughs> I, I could throw the Prime sub out there. But I'm doing yeah. good. I need to get mine set up like that, too, for real. But, oh, man, we, we, got, a, we got a lot to uh, discuss. We, well, we, we got a good bit to discuss. Um, we're still without um, Courtney. Don't call the plumber, but she'll be back with us next week, hopefully. So um, let's see if I can get this right and get us going efficiently for the final week that she's not going to be here. So to save everybody, we're not going to go all in on tons of NFL talk because there's, there's other stuff to talk about this week, mm-hmm. Jackson Law. Lots of news. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of news. Um, but, you know, first and foremost, I definitely want to give a shout out to one of our partners. Let me, pull, let me pull this bad boy up here right quick. First and foremost, hey, listen, if you're a big fan of sports gambling, Make sure you go to monkeyknifefight.com or download their mobile app on your Google Play Store or your Apple Store. Monkey Knife Fight. Now, of course, Jackson and Law cannot partake in Monkey yeah. Knife Fight. It's 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 more like a daily fantasy type deal. Yeah. But but I mean, still like some states it's iffy on. Yeah. And I, and I hate it, but it, yeah. it's it's more like a daily fantasy. It's not. It's not so it's much not gambling. gambling. It's, 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 it's it's daily fantasy. Right. You can just make a little bit of cheddar cheese on it. That's all. But it ain't really gambling. But make sure you go to monkeyknifefight.com or download Monkey Knife Fight onto your mobile devices. And when you have your very, very first deposit, they will match you dollar for dollar up to $100, provided you use our promo code VENDETTA. So when you first sign up, use our promo code VENDETTA and get matched 100, up to $100 on your very first deposit. With that being said... Jay Law, there's there's some news going on in the baseball world. We're not even at the winter meetings yet, but there's some cats that are getting paid. And when I say they getting paid, Jay Law, cats is getting hey. paid. They cashing them checks like they name is Tyrese. All right, <laughs> they cashing checks. Max Scherzer has just signed with the New York Mets. This is courtesy. This is You can check out this story from uh, Creed's Corner. Adam Krieger himself put this up on the uh, the Vendetta Sports Media page two days ago. Matt Scherzer is now a New York Met, Jackson Law. Yeah, I, uh, I remember when this news, when the rumors started to first come up about it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Krieg, big Mets guy, big Mets fan. He was freaking out in the MLB chat. Yes, I'm in the MLB chat, but I don't talk a lot of MLB because I, I, I'm going to keep it a buck. It's just not a sport that I actively keep up with, at least not until like the final <laughs> the final month, the home stretch, <laughs> getting, getting through September and then into October, and then I really start paying attention to baseball. But anyway, and even then, it's just 
two is a bigger number than one. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Krieg was freaking out about this. And Scherzer's 37 years old and signs a three-year deal. Or was looking to sign a three-year deal. Is it a three-year deal? Three-year deal, $130 million. Sheesh. Okay. Yep. Now, see, I don't, again, this is where I, 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 I know Scherzer is a good pitcher. He's been around for a He's long been around time. for a long time. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know. Does that put the Mets over the edge? I don't, I don't know. I feel like they have a lot of, a lot more problems to figure out. They, I know they had a pretty big mid season collapse and, and I, and I'll keep it a buck too. I know a lot more about uh, their owner Cohen because He's kind of a part of the conspiracy that happened earlier in the year uh, with uh, Citadel and uh, Robin Hood shutting down the uh, trading for a few days where people couldn't trade their GameStop and AMC stock. Yeah, I'm so they pissed even, about that because yeah, I was just about to jump in on that too. Yeah, you couldn't buy, you couldn't sell, couldn't do anything, just mass manipulation of the market. And that's kind of like where where his money lies is in is in that sphere. So, you know, he, he's pay, he's buying uh, Scherzer with blood money as, as far as I'm concerned. Well, what's crazy is that now Max Scherzer, they, they sent, they essentially brought him in as a replacement because they lost their ace of the last few years. Noah, Noah Syndergaard to the angels. He, he, he signed last week or two weeks ago, excuse me. He signed two weeks ago, a one year deal, $21 million with the, uh, the angels. So now he's joining uh, Mike Trout and um, Atani. What, what's that guy's name? Atoi? Uh, Sh uh, Shohei, uh, Sh Otani. Shohei Atani. Shohei Atani. Yeah. So all of a sudden now the Angels are getting relevant again. But no, yeah. so it's the Angels. The Angels. Listen, man. The Angels have two MVPs on their roster, and they win like what sixty games. <laughs> Yeah. Lot, they got a lot of problems. They've already, I feel like they've wasted Mike Trout's career and they're going to waste Otani's. I at least know enough about professional baseball mm. to, uh, to know that. Right. Well, the, the thing is though, the, the Mets have been pretty busy. You know, they, they, they made some deals last week. They, they signed um, Mark Canha, Eduardo Escobar, and then they signed Sterling Marte, which for me as a Pirates fan, I'm like, cool so what do you think you get now his contract is relatively small compared to some of these other contracts four-year deal 20 million and that still feels like they're overpaying because Marte sucks man he, he's <laughs> he's not all he's not all that great like I'd still take him over Gregory Polanco but still but you know the the, the Mets are getting aggressive man the, the Mets are the the, the Mets Feel like they're making the moves and they got the money to start making moves, but it's a wonder. You got, you know, Scherzer for as good as he is, he's 37 years old. A lot of guys have been able to pitch into their 40s. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but Scherzer's been around the well a good bit. So this is going to be interesting to see. Um, but the Mets ain't been spending near as much as. The Texas Rangers. What are those numbers that you had, Jackson Law? You were telling me about it. Um, they we spent. The it's air. like five hundred and sixty-one million dollars in the past few days, dude. That means that they're paid. That what they have paid? What two guys that much money? Yeah, two guys. Like it's like it's mainly two guys. It's specifically one guy that's taken up a massive chunk of that, and I think there's a little bit more sprinkled out in there, but it's it's over five hundred million, dude. Per, Basically, yeah, almost one guy. Like Corey Sager is taking up three hundred and twenty-five million of that five hundred and something million dollars. What's hilarious to me is that they're paying a couple of their, their payroll is five times more damn near than the Pirates' payroll. That's Corey hilarious. Sager is going to make more this year than what every Corey Sager. I think he's going to make more money this season than what the entire Pirates roster makes. Every single yeah. one of those guys, he's going to if they including all coaches. Their, if they all if they all pulled their money together and they're like, "This is the money we have to outbid 
Corey Sager, Corey Sager could drop a few extra bucks and still have something left over. There you go. That's, man. That blows my mind. The baseball for a t- for for a sport whose revenue is hardly there because they don't market for sh- nothing. They be paying some major like and we're, I and, we're, and we're coming off a of co- like COVID years too, and right? Like where, where the money's been strained. Dry. Like all the other sports, it almost looks like wow. Like you know, baseball got some. They they gotta have some mob money. Dude, they gotta have some mob money. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. I mean, first off, it just goes to show you how rich these teams, these organizations, these owners are. When you're coming off of COVID years and you're just like, I'm gonna drop okay. a cool 500 mil on basically two. Well, there's more than two dudes, but just a couple of dudes. You Yo, know, I'm gonna put 350 mil on one cat. Yeah, I mean, he's with me for 10 years. He's 27 years old. You know. Yeah, you got him throughout his prime right into his decline. And you're an American League team. So when he's not fast enough to make those plays at short, you just throw him at DH because he still has a bat. He batted, what, 306 last year? Yeah. Yeah, he batted 306, which, hey, 300 is still a good batting average in Major League Baseball. So you still have that bat when he can't perform in the field anymore. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. 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 Uh-oh, Brian's frozen. It's just me. Okay. Um, a sport that I don't know too much about and to talk about it. I saw something on Twitter today. Someone said they give you uh they give you ramen for the first six, seven years that you're in baseball, and then they just drop 300 mil on you the next Dude, day. Ba- baseball, baseball is the ultimate rags to riches sport. Baseball, you're either not getting paid or you're getting paid, paid. so much that it money it's literally stupid. does not matter to you right. anymore. You have the biggest amount of fu money of any athlete on the planet, and it's all guaranteed. What, as soon as you sign that contract, it's like here you go. You see, like seriously, I, I see basketball players be trying to get all cocky when it comes to money. I'm surprised baseball players are like Psh, broke ass. <laughs> Look, look at you, LeBron James, with your broke ass. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> baseball's baseball's weird. There's like there's different like the three major uh, American sports. You've got baseball, football, and basketball. MLB, NFL, NBA. There's different levels to what the relationship is between their commissioner and their unions. It's like baseball, best union of any sport out there. For real, no, no salary cap. And no limit to what players can make. Right. As Corey Sager signs the dotted line very quickly on a $325 million deal. I think also his agent was like very eager. To Dude, his, agent's like, man, his agent looking at him like, you better not pull a TJ Watt. You better yeah. sign this goddamn thing. The fax machine needs to work quicker. <laughs> Yo, he's like, hey, he, he, he's, doing, he's, doing a, he's doing a private Facebook yeah. group. He signed it. He signed it. Yeah, and then like the NBA, it doesn't have like the best union, I think, because I think you have powerful voices. Oh, great! Now Jackson's frozen. Yeah. You, well, yeah. In baseball, you got the powerful voices, so that even if the union maybe isn't doing what you want, you've got people like LeBron that have enough power and influence that their voice is going to carry a whole lot of weight. And then you go to the NFL where, you know, cats are still comparing the NFL to like slavery. And if you do one thing that ownership doesn't like, your career is essentially over and done. So baseball for as weird as it is, and we lost Jackson law, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, we, Jackson, yeah, we lost Jackson. He'll be back in a second. So the whole point of the matter though, is that baseball is so weird for a sport whose marketing is essentially useless, man. They're, 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 that clout is just unreal. No, no limits to what anybody can make. It's just, look, you want to pay a guy half a billion dollars. That's your money. It's fine. Whatever. 
And then what do they do? They, they, they raise ticket prices. They raise concession prices to make it work. And then they just keep going. It's amazing. B baseball is a hell of a racket, man. I still remember my kid asking me when he was a kid, when he was little, and he goes, Dad, what sport should I play? Should I play football or basketball? I said, boy, you better start playing baseball. That's automatic guaranteed money. You're less likely to get hurt than you would be in any of those other sports. <laughs> you ain't allowed to hit the catcher no more. <laughs> you better get your ass on the diamond. <laughs> man, oh, man, this is just... Un, it's just unbelievable. It it totally wows me. The fact that these baseball contracts are what they are. But I mean, for 162 games out of a year, that does take its toll. So I get it. But damn. I mean, for a sport that has less contact than any of the major North American sports, and you make it more money than any of them combined. Like, seriously, you look at Starling Marte. Starling Marte, as I said earlier, Starling Marte is making, what is it? Hold on, I got it right here in front of me. $5 million a year, four years, $20 million. This guy's making, like, like I'm sure there's some guys in the, in, in the NFL that are like, man, I wish I would have had that contract. It's just, it's unreal. Especially a guy with Starla Marte is, you know, he he's 33 years old. He's he's had his he's had his fair share of injuries. He hasn't really his last years in Pittsburgh were really, really difficult for him. He, you know, he ends up going to Arizona as a free agent. Doesn't really make a lot of waves. I mean, I didn't hear about anything he was doing. But here we go, man. I mean, I guess it just goes to show, especially in baseball, once once a superstar, always a superstar. For a while, because especially in baseball, you start getting older, it don't matter. They're you, you find ways to make it work. And like I said earlier, you start playing in the American League, your bat, your, your legs start to leave you fine. You just be a DH. Because you know the Boston Red Sox, after a while, they didn't even worry about trying to put um, David Ortiz, you know, put put Ortiz in at first base. Like you know, just be the DH, dude. You fine. Just. Hit the ball every now and again. You cool. All right. Jackson Law's back. Jay Law's returned. All right. On my phone now, there is an internet outage right now. Oh. So, so no, what I was what I was essentially saying is that baseball is really weird because, like you were saying, like with basketball, you've got those influential voices. So you got guys like LeBron or KD. Well, if there's something going on that they don't like from the Union standpoint, they still hold all the cards. Yeah, exactly. But then, like, the point that I was getting to was NFL has the worst of both worlds. Oh, like, I already said NFL is essentially yeah. slavery. Yeah. Ter <laughs> terrible, terrible commissioner, terrible union. Pretty much. And with baseball, you know, and I made this point already, and I'm only going to repeat myself because I want to get your opinion on it. With baseball, it's almost like, look, once you're a superstar at one point, you're always going to make some bank. Like, no matter what. And it almost seems like, look, you're less likely to get seriously injured. Like, all right, you, you, you're probably going to need Tommy John surgery, throwing the ball too hard as often as you do. You're going to injure, you know, a knee running the way you do, stepping on the bag because that those the bag can cause a real awkward jolt to the to the leg when you step on it when you're in full. Yeah, and, and if you round it, I've... You I've, round it wrong. I've, you're turning I've, I've my ankle a time or two rounding. The Same bag. here. Same here. Or you overswing your shoulders going to get digged up. So yeah, you're going to get hurt, but it's more what you do to your body. It's not running into another human being because you ain't even allowed to hit the damn catcher no more. Nope. Baseball is the cushiest professional sport ever. Besides maybe golf. <laughs> Golf could get pretty intense, too. Just ask Tiger Woods. Oh, for real? I mean, dude, his wife came and hit with a nine iron. That's what I'm saying, man. It's dangerous <laughs> out there. It is. But you also probably don't want to go messing around on your wife, knowing that she, uh, or she she could be real possessive. Like, I'm pretty sure Mrs. Law, if she even, if she even sniffed for a nanosecond that she was stepping out, your balls would be in that Xbox refrigerator. Oh, I ain't. Ain't no stepping. No stepping. Ain't. No, ha, stepping. 
Man, ba baseball, but baseball, back to, you know, what I was saying, that, that's, that's a cushy gig, man. I mean, granted, 162 games a year, that's a lot. Like, you're playing a game, like, every day of the week. And, like, take, you only get, like, one to three days off, maybe. Yeah, but, I mean, how much, how much physical activity are you doing during those games, though? Depending on uh, what you do. Uh, dude, it's just one of those nights tonight, man. That's why I'm screw Sudden Link right now. I hate Sudden Link so much. Have I said that I hate Sudden Link before? Once or twice. But no, nah, yeah. man, you, you're right, though. You, you're, you're right. I mean, it's, it's really, unless you're the pitcher, that's really the most work that you're doing. Yeah. Because you're throwing the ball between 50 to 100 times if you're a starter and about, what, 25 to 30 if you're a relief guy. You know, you, you, it, you most of the time you just stand in there. I mean, just look at the type of people that play baseball, too. You know, uh, um, like uh, David Ortiz is a name. I, that used, him, I used him as an example. When yeah. I said oh, if, when he came when he came perform in the field no more. You're in the American League. Yeah, you just a bat. What's the dude? Oh, I forget. It's Pablo Sandoval. That was his name. Yeah. Right? Kung Fu Panda. Uh, yeah. Dude was huge. Massive. Like, make no mistake about it. The man was fat. He played baseball. <laughs> Shit, that's just... He was also a very long... Yes! Player. Yes! I remember CC. He was my favorite pitcher for a lot of years. Better yet, remember, was it Kirby Puckett? He he was a pudgy dude. There's a lot of pudgy dudes that play baseball. And not only that, but as players get older, they kind of start to turn into pudgy dudes. Especially right! AL, because you, you just get put on the DH. Right. Push to get the NL to have a DH instead of have the pitcher hit. Man, so, I'll tell you what, man. Not, not every not every 30 plus 30 to 40 year old ball player is gonna look like Tom Berenger in major league. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> like baseball is the weirdest sport because you there can be such an age and weight, like physically massive divide. Right. Like a dude that's in his second or third year and a guy that's in his 20th year. And both of them are going to be playing at the exact same elite level. level. It's like, like someone posted the picture of it was a it was a side by side of DK Metcalf. And then I forget his name, but he's the he's the kicker for the Colts. He came from Georgia. He's a really scrawny white dude with got wears goggles. And then DK Metcalf is just an absolute unit Beast. of of a man. And it's like, I love the NFL because both of these dudes play. It's like, I love the sport of football because both of these dudes play the exact same sport professionally. Yeah, but DK but DK Metcalf is going to kill this guy. Oh, he, he would absolutely kill that man. It's just it's just one of those things where it's like, like basketball, it's like, unless you're like seven foot three or four, or, you know, you're Shaq in his later years, you need to be really athletic to right. play basketball. Baseball, right. not so much. Football, nope. if you can kick a football, then you don't have to be as physically gifted as someone like DK Metcalf. You could be Nigel Gruff from The Replacements just smoking a <laughs> cigarette on the practice field, carrying your helmet. Ole, 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 ole. Like that, which, I mean, you know, there is a bit of a difference with the NFL, too, because big guys, big guys, sneaky athletic in the NFL. Offensive linemen with their footwork, or if you're... true. Even like the, the like the biggest exception to the athletic rule that was bigger and scary, uh, 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 sneaky athletic, uh, Jerome Bennis, your boy. The Jerome boy. Bennis was frightening because he is way dude. faster than you would expect him to be. That's a big dude for a running back. Oh, by the way, Tua looks good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we can talk about that later if you want. I mean, I, I, I was more, I was just more taking a stab at Trey because he can't be in the uh, comments. Oh yeah. But you know, let's, let's take a quick break. Cause I want to talk about your buddy boy chum, um, Kemba Walker. What the hell's going on with him? My buddy boy. That's, that's, hey man, that's your man 50 grand. What? That's your guy. That's your guy. That's your man 50 grand right there. Him be my man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see him. Uh, suiting up at the forum in a Grizzlies jersey. He said, I'll mess with him. <laughs> All right, we're going to be right back on the Tandemonial Sports Show. We're broadcasting live on Twitch TV. Make sure you follow us 
um, live every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media, all one word. We are a part of the Vendetta Sports Media podcasting network. Go to vendettasportsmedia.com to get all of our content in one place. We'll be right back. We're going to start talking a little bit about why Jackson Law's bestest friend and pen pal, Kemba Walker, can't seem to get right this year. We'll be right back on the Tandemonium Sports Show. Hey, you. Yeah, you. In case you hadn't heard, your favorite renegade sports media group has its own Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media to support our efforts to continuously bring you sports, gaming, and other media coverage as only we can. We've got four different membership tiers. For $3 a month, we'll give you a simple thank you on our Patreon site. For $6 a month, you get a thank you and you get to become a recruit in Jackson Law's Vendetta University Gaming Series. For $10 a month, you get everything from the previous tiers, a special thank you at the end of our videos, free access to our upcoming Discord chat, and a free koozie after four months, and then the big dog. $50 a month gets you everything from the previous tiers, as well as opportunities for Fantasy League invites, stream gaming, possible invites to mock NFL and NBA draft sessions, a once a month Google Hangout, and after four months, a free t-shirt. Yeah! Go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media and help us to improve our pledge to bring you the best sports, gaming, and other media coverage. All right, we're back here on the Tandemonial Sports Show, broadcasting live here on Twitch TV, proudly a part of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcasting Network. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Tandemonium VSM. I live tweet the Pittsburgh Steelers games every weekend. I kind of wish I didn't. Nothing but pain. Nothing but pain. I was seriously tweeting out in that game. I was like, why do I do this? Like, I'm not even going to lie, Jackson. I turned that game off after. Like, <laughs> I think, well, once we got to five minutes left in the fourth quarter, I said, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm done with this. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame you. And I also want to say this, too. I couldn't find it. But on the Balls Deep uh, fantasy show that we haven't done in a while, um, I was I was on there. I remember we went over. It was like the top quarterbacks in the league because it was. Oh, who's who? Who was it? Who was it? I think it was Chris Collinsworth's uh, uh, like uh, QB rankings or something. And okay. like uh, Ben Roethlisberger, I can't remember exactly where he was, but I made the comment. I said not for fantasy and not just as a quarterback, I was not taking Ben Roethlisberger in like the top 20 of my quarterbacks. I said, not, I said, not top 10, definitely not, not 15, probably not top 20. Currently right now, he is the number 25 fantasy quarterback. And then like this past Sunday was the reason why I, I did not want Ben Roethlisberger. So just, just to toot my own horn uh, a little bit on that. Again, I have I have small victories, so I have to take the in in typical sports media fashion. I have to exacerbate how big those times are that I am correct, and only focus on those times. And even though it's like one out of every fifteen takes that I get right, I will not <laughs> stop talking about the one take that I am right on. Well, I mean, hey man, when you write, you write. Yeah. Hey, For hey, a... hey. Colts looking good. I mean, they they kind of. You know, blew it this past Sunday, but you know that they definitely it, crapped the bed. It's it's not over for them though. No, they're it, still in it. it. It's really the odd too. Are like, I don't, I don't the know, Titans I don't are know, imploding. I know, and I don't know why I'm rooting for the Colts so bad. I guess it's because I want to be right. Because we want to see Carson Wentz yeah. do well. But That's I mean, why. like my Dolphins have won. I think is it four straight? Yeah, it's four straight now. So they're they are technically in the wild card hunt. Which is yeah. insane to think after the start of the season. They started one and seven and have won four straight, including yeah, one against the, your division rival Ravens. Yeah, but then they're going to be without Tua next year. So, But you want to talk about a, a, a fan base that knows what it's like to hurt the New York Knickerbockers. Knickerbockers. So they went out and they signed Kemble Walker – for two year, eighteen million dollar deal. Now this is a this is this is a story that the boss man himself Trey wrote about. 
Yeah. And, and he said, and I love his headline, Kemba Walker sucks so bad now that the Knicks removed him from the rotation. And it's pretty bad. Trey, said, Trey said when they signed him, this was a bad move. And it's it's showing. It's showing. You know, he and you know, Trey calls him in his article. He says he was a cancer in Boston. His knees are terrible. Are you really shocked that he's not doing well in New York? He's I mean, right now, this guy, Kemba Walker, who was a former top draft pick, he was a lottery pick. Eleven points, just under twelve points, barely three assists in 18 games, and he's played 24 and a half minutes. That's not what you expect. That's not what you expect out of a guy of that pedigree at all. Yeah, I mean, he's played in the league for a while. He's definitely – injuries have hurt him bad. He has regressed tremendously ever since he left Charlotte, which, I mean, good on uh, MJ for letting him walk. Yeah, <laughs> MJ, MJ seems to be finally after all these years has figured out how He's to finally run, understand what to do. F- finally understands how to run an NBA franchise and seems to be doing fairly OK right now. Um, the, the Hornets at least are a really fun, really fun team. Uh, they're doing, to, they're to not watch. doing bad. They're not doing bad. But I mean, yeah, I mean, after the past couple of years with the Celtics, he just has not played well. Couldn't really lead that team. Uh, couldn't stay healthy. And I mean, I keep reiterating this, but you know, th- that was a big issue was health. And I think that's, what's really hurt him is health. And he's just not meshing well with this, this young team. Now I did see today, which would be interesting is that John wall still wants to play. Like it's been a big story over the past week about John wall, like posting uh, workout vids on Instagram with hashtag free me. Uh, on there Uh, but I saw someone brought up today that potentially a swap for Kimba and John Wall could be in place but John Wall's contract is so big I don't know who else the Knicks would move I'd I'd, I'd have to like really look at the money and the numbers and everything but I don't know I don't know if they can move him for for anything for anything valuable they're gonna have to eat they're gonna have to eat a chunk of that contract they're going to have to eat all of it because NBA contracts are fully guaranteed and you gave them a two-year contract unless that second year is a team option. You're stuck with paying him this much. Right. Or now, do you think now do you think John Wall would be a good fit if he ended up in New York? Do you think he would fit in there though? Because that's another guy who's dealing with injury for a good bit of his career. Because he was, like, he's trying to carry a was, whole damn team on his back. It was fun to see him come back with Houston a little bit, but then of course, injured again and they're obviously and they're not which houston is doing a terrible job of tanking anyways because not only are they tanking they're not playing their young players to develop them really that much like Jalen green has gotten quite a bit of playing time but it's like it's not as much as you would think they are running like lineups and uh in close games with like three minutes left to go uh and it's like all these old vets that have no business being on the court right now they're not letting the young guns run wild um but I don't. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think a trade for John Wall. First off, I don't even know if it's even possible because John Wall's contract is is so massive. I won't say it's it's impossible. It's to not move, possible, but, but, but it's gonna it, be hard. It's it's like improbable might be the word. It's like it's probably not going to happen. Where you can, where the value that you're giving up just to get rid of Kimball Walker is not going to be equal to what you'd be receiving from Houston for John Wall. Cause Houston is not going to want to part with any picks that they have. They are a rebuilding team and the Knicks on the other hand thought they were a contending team, but they have <laughs> obviously taken a massive step backwards from last season, which this this NBA season I've, I once again am dumbfounded and confused by this NBA season. I feel like anytime I get a grasp of what's happening in the NBA, I'm I'm surprised. It's like <laughs> only four teams in the NBA in, in the Western Conference are above 500. The East looks absolutely dominant and amazing. Are we seeing the the big shift in paradigm? I have no idea, but the Knicks have kind of fallen off a little bit on that. But I don't think a, a trade for John Wall would help. But yeah, Kimba sucked. He deserves to go on the bench. Just 
play Emmanuel quickly. He's a really serviceable guard right now. Maybe he could develop into something, take a, another step forward. But they should have just focused on quickly anyway because the and the Kimball Walker thing was so weird because they already had Derrick Rose too to take minutes away from Emmanuel quickly. So what, you have Derrick Rose and Kimball Walker taking minutes away from a, a valuable young prospect that you're trying to develop? Never made much sense to me, but Tom Thibodeau also isn't necessarily in the business of developing young talent. He wants to win now. That's right. that's Thibodeau's mindset is just win, win, even if it's at the cost of developing young talent. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're going to do, you're not going to win and you're going to have hurt your young talent. Right. So let's shift gears a little bit. We started to talk a little bit about the NFL and this is going to take us through this segment. Um, this was an article written by Max Murphy earlier today. Looking at the week 12 NFL storylines and takeaways, this has been a painful week for a lot of fan bases, <laughs> mine included. But this is also a week of some hope. So, so let, let, let's go through each of these little bits one by one and see what we can come up with. So one of the things that Murph comes out with, first and foremost, the Packers are the best team in the league. They are sure looking like it. They are looking like it. Um, the fact, though, you know, he, you know, Murph brings up that with the Packers win over Arizona, that was like their most impressive win of the year without Devontae Adams or Jair Alexander. Mm -hmm. And it's right. Like, that was a big deal. Um, and the fact of the matter is they keep finding ways to win. They found ways to win even with Aaron Rodgers and his the COVID fiasco. Um, they destroyed the Rams. I mean, they, they they worked over the Rams. Yeah, no, that it was a fun game to watch, and uh, I mean, my Rams pick not looking too great. Which I mean, my Super Bowl pick in general not looking great. The Bills aren't looking so hot out in the mm -hmm. AFC, which the the AFC is a crapshoot. Also, I don't think like like I think I said it last week, or maybe it was when Josh Taylor came on. There's like five teams that you could say out uh, in the NFC, it's like that team's going to go to the Super Bowl. And you'd have a legitimate reason why to explain why each of those five teams could go to the Super Bowl. In the AFC, you're just like, I got no There's idea. There's teams there. There's <laughs> teams in that league. There's a few teams. And it's like, there will be eight AFC teams that make the playoffs. And one of them is going to make the Super Bowl. And not, neither one of them, none of them are going to win that Super Bowl either. The yeah. NFC is going to slap the AFC I think like that, they used to in the eighties. Yeah, and <clears throat> the Packers. I mean, honestly, are, the Packers are looking like the best team right now. It's, it's looking like it's scary. looking like the Packers could get it done, and um, the Rams have not won a thing since they brought in Von Miller and um, Odell Beckham. Yeah, that's um, worrisome. <laughs> it's weird. It's absolutely weird. And poor they're, Matt Stafford. They're, they're turning into the Lakers now. Yeah, like all hey. these big, all these big names and old vets, but they can't win. Hey, maybe Matt Stafford is who we thought he was. Something about LA. I know. So moving on, Murph says it's time for Big Ben to hang it up, and it's been time for Ben to hang it up about a year ago, two years ago. Yes. Um, that interception he threw to Eli Apple was just brutal. That was yeah. such a bit, but. I'm also going to put some blame on Chase Claypool. Maple, number one, and I even said in the tweet, I'm not even calling Chase Claypool Mapletron anymore. You got to earn a nickname with me. <laughs> and he ain't been earning it. Did you hear what? Did you hear about what has Chase Claypool in hot water? Yeah, he said he wanted uh, Tomlin to play more music. Uh, in practice. practice. To make it more yeah, fun. Because, yeah, because they ask him what needs to be done for this team. Go, oh, maybe music in practice. Now Cam Hayward went on to uh, went on WDVE this morning. He always comes on the Tuesday after a game, win or lose, and he's always very, very candid. And he goes, "I hope he wasn't serious, because that sure as hell ain't never gonna happen." And um, shout out to Ryan Clark, especially because he called this team out for the BS that it's doing. You know, they're like they're, 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 there's no. Dude, did you hear that rant? Did you hear Ryan Clark go off? Yes. Now, okay, but the thing I'm laughing at is this is kind of breaking news right now. Okay. The great thing about doing a live show is that um, you get the breaking news. Yeah. LeBron James has entered the health and safety protocols and is out tonight versus Sacramento. 
versus Lakers. Um, and Lakers, or so LeBron will be sidelined for at least 10 days or unless he returns two negative test results in 24 hours. LeBron got the through. COVID. Yeah, and the top comment was just "la COVID." <laughs> that's what that's, that's what I was laughing up. at. That's, that's what I was laughing up. at. <laughs> and you know who I bet nicknames. And like, you know who I bet is la la GM. La Here's COVID. what I want to know: Where did the snitch come from? Okay, so the snitch came from that was from a few days ago, where there were some fans that were chatting yeah uh, and they Adam told him and, they wanted his kid to die yeah, in a car yeah, crash yeah, yeah yeah so like but he, how is that snitching I, I don't know man Yo, but they are lucky that it was if that was my kid they were saying that yeah. about it would be malice in the palace too no you don't talk about my kid uh, yeah but i mean so but he went and got a referee and Good. Him, so people oh. call him the snitch yeah. oh and you know what <laughs> donnie j right there donnie j Hey, right uh, there. I, I guess to, I guess. What if you good. accomplish, you coked yeah. out freak? I guess. I guess it was real quickly. I guess it was good, but also not good from like an entertainment standpoint. But also good because you didn't want anything to happen. Um, the, there was no fight between the Jokic and Morris brothers last night in Miami. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah. I would have liked to. Have but seen they did problem. go party and play the Serbian national anthem because <laughs> the, the Nuggets won. Well. Even if they lost, you better play that Serbian national anthem. You don't want to get those Jokic boys pissed. <laughs> no, the Morrises, the Morrises try so hard. They're like they're, they're, they they want to be gangsters so hard, but then they they buckle like a belt. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They, they they only get rough and rugged with folks they think they can get away with it with. Like I'm serious. Like I don't recall did they ever try to start stuff with Kevin Garnett. No, because no. Kevin Garnett would have killed both of them. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett's not a nice guy when you get him all riled up. And he's too big to be messing with. Oh, man. But I especially have to give a shout-out to um, Joe Burrow, man. Joe Burrow looked amazing this past Sunday. Oh, like, he, he was a, he was efficient. And, I mean, they he didn't really have to do much. Joe Mixon did all the work. <laughs> dude, Joe Mixon looked like – look he looked like Jim Brown running <laughs> over people. <laughs> And it's just like, and then you got you got Devin Bush. Like I'm gonna tackle you. Nah, nah, nah. Cool. You you go ahead. You do you, man. You do you do you do. Uh, your Miami Dolphins started out one and seven. Have won four straight. They made the Carolina Panthers look toothless. They made former MVP Cam Newton look pedestrian. Made Jackson look like Law scared little kitty cats. What is going on down there in South Beach? Uh, Tua is finally turning the corner is what's happening. So Tua's looking good, you would say. Tua is looking good. He is <laughs> averaging over a 100 QBR over the past, even beyond these, these four games. It's been like his past five or six starts. And it's getting to the point where there's so much crap talking about Tua. Like there's people outside of Miami fan base that are seeing the comparisons of Tua versus Mac Jones from a stat line perspective, from an overall record perspective, and but the perspective on how the media treats both of these guys. Whereas Mac Jones is the darling, the savior of the Patriots dynasty in the heir apparent to Tom Brady's throne. Whereas, See, your whereas kid don't Tua, even want to hear that. Oh, no, your kid hates the Patriots he is, so he is, much. He's he flipping he out. Is extremely upset. He don't want to hear this. nothing about Patriots. He, he hears me talk about it and complain about it all the time, and he's just wanting to put his two cents in on this. But then you got Tua over here where everyone is just ready to throw him under the bus, get rid of him, throw him into the next hurricane that – flings by Miami and just let him get tossed into the Gulf. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But, and you know what? Like I already said, Tua ain't going to be there next year. If I'm Tua, I find a way to I get I mean, I want him there. to so bad because this is, this is the Tua that I knew that we could get. He was extremely efficient. He was 27 to 31 for 230 yards, one touchdown through the air, but then also had uh, – um, I thought he had a touchdown on the ground. Maybe he didn't. He, no, he didn't. Okay. But still a lot of drives pushed him down the field. A lot of them were finished off by miles Gaskin. 
Uh, the defense has been really big in stepping up. Um, and then, of course, Jalen Waddle is Waddle. He's he's playing Sorry. he's playing phenomenally. And there's still a lot of questions about play calling that I have. Where it was like a couple times I was watching those games. And it's like, can we stop getting too cute with these RPOs? Like <laughs> we don't have a good enough offensive line to constantly run. Hey, y'all's RPOs. line, y'all's line is better than mine. Just that is saying. that is false. That is false. <laughs> All right, the Abraham. Top, the top three uh, offensive linemen in giving up pressures, at least the last time I checked, belonged to three Miami Dolphins. Of the top five, three of them were Miami Dolphins. Yeah, but the Steelers line looks like Swiss cheese at all times. So does Miami, too. They're just they're running these short pass plays because they know Tua can't hold onto the ball for more than two and a half seconds. So he's got to get the ball out in two. And even That's sometimes true. then he can't because... I saw one idiot on Twitter was like short routes or it's like uh long deep passing routes take just as long to develop as short passing routes. He should get the ball out quicker to deep routes. And it's like, what are you talking about, bro? bro like, what are you, you don't, smoking? You what don't you know smoking? football. You don't know. Football. I don't know much about football, but I, I I know that it's like deep routes. He, like man's got to run six, seven yards before he makes his move. Right. So here, here's one thing. And I want to get your opinion on this. Um, Murph says it's time for Seattle to blow the whole thing up. Fire Pete Carroll, trade Russell Wilson. Do you think that the Seahawks could even get a first round pick for Russell Wilson at this oh, point? Oh, 100%. 100%. He's, when he's fully healthy, he's an MVP caliber player. It's just he hasn't had that great of a team surrounding him ever since they lost that Super Bowl against the Patriots. They just haven't been the same. They haven't had a Legion of Boom to rely on for their shortcomings on the offensive side. And even then it's like Seattle had a decent run game and a decent offensive line and decent receivers, but they've always had Russell Wilson to bail them out and rely them on, even though Pete Carroll for whatever reason would never fully unleash Russell Wilson. He always stuck with it on the ground. And then anytime they would throw was play action or something. It's just like the Adams deal, the Jamal Adams deal. Murph points it out correctly. Um, looks better and better each day for the Jets. It's an off. It was an awful trade. I don't know why they did it. What was it like? Uh, two first round picks they gave up for Jamal so, yeah. Adams. It's an, it's insane. So they, they they were hoping to get that Legion of Boom back. Except man. you know Jamal Adams has like one one interception in like forty games for them or something like that. I don't know what the actual statistic is, but it's insane how low this man's interception is for the amount that he gets paid and what the ransom that they paid to get him in Seattle. Yeah, but I agree. Like, I thought this past year was going to be the last season for Russell Wilson. I thought this last offseason, I thought he was gone because they were so upset. He was so upset, upset about the situation and they weren't bunging an inch. But last night was just horrific. And it's time. It's even, time for even, him to move on. Like, how do you lose against a team with no name? How does any team in the NFL? And yo, like, that, that, should, that touchdown should... pass was beautiful. I love that touchdown pass was hey. so beautiful. Hey. Tyler Hineke, man, he's the real deal. Tyler Hineke's the real deal. No, I'm talking the one that Russell Wilson threw. Oh, Russell threw. Wilson threw? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, that, that touchdown pass was amazing. Oh, and, no, Wilson's an amazing the, quarterback. And then the very next play for the two-point conversion, interception. Yeah, horrible. but there's, there's, there is there is no saving this team, I, I think. I feel like you've got you've to blow it up because you're paying Wilson so much money. That you've got, you've got to move on from him because you're not going to be able to rebuild this team. And also, I don't know what the play calling is. I don't know if they're not intentionally doing this. But DK Metcalf had like three targets last night. You mean to tell me that that man was getting shut down by Washington secondary? Because there's no I, way. There's no there's way no that way. DK Metcalf either either the play calling wasn't there. Him and Russell Wilson are having a dispute, and Wilson doesn't want to throw him the ball. Maybe Russell Wilson has Tyler Lockett on his fantasy team instead of DK Metcalf, um, or That's or maybe funny. he's on, or maybe That's Lockett's funny. on, maybe maybe Lockett's on Pete Carroll's fantasy team <laughs> instead of Metcalf. Oh. Um, but I don't know what it is, or if it's just incompetence and they're not game planning for Metcalf. Because so then, I, where do you see where do you, where do you see Wilson going next year then? Oh, let's see. I mean, the number of teams, it's the same teams. It's it's you know Carolina, Philly, 
New Orleans, Broncos, um, uh, Raiders, if you want to get exotic. The Raiders. Um, Minnesota, maybe? I don't think that would look right. Mm, it'd, it'd be very weird to see Wilson in purple. If I'm the Steelers, I'd try to get him. Yeah, but then I mean, again, but then he's going from one team with no offensive line to another team with no offensive line. That's so true. See that's, the mind. Yeah, so he's he's going to AFC Seattle if he if he does that. Pretty much, um, honestly, I, I would probably see him going to. He might. He, I, I I could see the Raiders. I, I could almost see the Raiders. Yeah, but here's the thing: I do like Derek Carr still. I think he gets a very bad rap. I just feel like he's not. I agree. Gonna, I don't. I feel like he's just. He hasn't been surrounded with love. The way if, that he if, he not, if he doesn't go, if he doesn't go to the Raiders, he de- he pro- it's probably going to be he, the Broncos because the Broncos are have been quarterback hungry for years. Yeah, and since, uh, since I mean since Peyton retired. Yeah, and I mean you know, he I think he'd still have a good option with New Orleans. I think New Orleans has a good That's head true. on their shoulders. Where if they made a trade for him, then they could they could still they build a solid to. team around him, and he'd have a, he'd have a running game with Kamara. Um, he'd have a receiver to throw to in Michael Thomas whenever he finally gets fully healthy and is playing again. Uh, and that defense isn't a pushover defense either. So yeah, yeah. It's, I right. think New Orleans could be maybe the best landing spot for him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then the final one of this segment, um, the offensive rookie of the year race is heating up now. Trey and I got into a little bit of a headbutt <laughs> over Jamar Chase and Najee Harris. And um, here's the thing. I think right now Jamar Chase is obviously he he's the front runner, as he should be. You also, but you got to mention um, you got Jalen Waddle in the mix, and Murph mentions these guys as well: Creed Humphrey, Najee Harris, and Matt Jones. Though those are the guys that need to be in this conversation. Yeah, um, and I, I did see a conversation on Twitter between um, Alex Chick and Murphy. Of giving Rashawn Slater some love too. That's a rookie that has stepped in and is playing phenomenal football. He looks like he looks like a 10-year vet playing out there. He's a freaking rookie. Okay. That's I, I mean, there other teams like the Bengals, they're obviously happy with their Jamar Chase pick. But Rashawn Slater is looking, he's looking like a Hall of Famer, right? Now. <laughs> the way that he's he's playing, like Jamar Chase. Looking fantastic, potential Hall of Famer and everything, but Slater is playing at an amazing, amazing level. I, it's it's insane the way that he's he's willing to take one on one matchups against players like Miles Garrett, and is just he's play he's it's insane. He's taking on Miles Garrett one on one head on, and he's winning. He's winning against Miles Garrett. But the problem is the reason why he's not gonna win. He's offensive lineman. He's an offensive lineman. Offensive linemen don't really. I win know that he award. he deserves it some sucks. love though. He deserves. He really some love. does. He does. Shout out! Shout out! Rashawn Slater. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna take our final break, and we're gonna come in. We're gonna talk a little bit of college football, and then we're gonna call it a night. I gotta be up. I gotta get up at three o'clock in the morning, man. I got a flight in the morning. Man's it's got gonna... places to go and people to see. That's right, man. I got stuff, and I'm actually gonna talk. A, a, Jack, Jackson knows what's going on. I'm going to talk more about it. I'm going to go public with it probably next week if I'm able to. But right now, I kind of got to keep things a little bit on the hush. So with that being said, just know that I got some good news coming. But we're going to take a break. We're going to talk a little bit about Lincoln Riley and how much he's pissed off the Oklahoma (laughs) Sooner fan base. But we'll be right back here on the Tandemonial Sports Show broadcasting live, as always, every Tuesday evening. 6.30 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitch TV on the Vendetta Sports Media um, channel here on Twitch. You can get all of our content on VendettaSportsMedia.com. Matter of fact, let me, let me bring that banner up. Where's that banner? Not Zach banner. That banner. <laughs> get all of our content Which on Vendetta banner? Sports. Yeah, him too. Get all of our content on VendettaSportsMedia.com. Or you can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. We're definitely on, well, at least the 10 million sports show. We are definitely on Spotify. I know because I set that up myself. Anyway, we'll be back for our final segment here on the Tandemonium Sports Show, broadcasting live here on Twitch TV, a proud part of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcast and Network. We'll be right back. The following broadcast is brought to you in association by XP Coffee Company. 
XP Coffee Company is the fresh brewed coffee made for gamers by gamers. Get amazing flavors like Choco Loco in 8, 12, or 16 ounce bags. Or level up and get illusion, isolation, nightmare, or the majestic throne blends in light, medium, or dark roast in whole bean. Coarse French press, drip, or fine espresso in 12 ounce, 16 ounce, or 2 pound bags. Wow! Shipping worldwide. If you're in the U.S., go to usa.xpcoffee.co. If you're in Europe or in the U.K., go to www.xpcoffee.co. XP Coffee Company. For gamers. By gamers. All right, we're back for our final segment here of the Tandemonial Sports Show. Proud member of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcasting Network. Broadcasting live every week, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. But you know what? Let's take a second before we get too deep into this. How can you get in touch with us? How can you find out what's going on with all of our content? Bam. Check us out right there. You can find us on Twitch. Subscribe to us. Go to, Twi- go to Twitch. Well, actually, that's what we're on right now. Vendetta Sports Media. There we are right there. Subscribe to us there. You're on Facebook. Look us up on Facebook. Vendetta Sports Media. All of our stuff goes up there as well. So... You got no excuses. You're an Instagram person? Search Vendetta Sports Media on Instagram. <laughs> We're there. We are the everywhere brand. you are. Twitter, at media underscore vendetta. <laughs> Look us up there. There's always something going on over there as well. But if you want to check out what's going on with the podcast specifically, go to at podcast underscore vendetta. All right. All the podcast stuff is there as well. But we're also on TikTok. You want to see our boss, Trey, dance around like a Looney Tune? <laughs> Check us out on TikTok. Go to Vendetta Sports Media on TikTok. Show some love. You go there, let them know that I told you to go and check it out. And especially check us out on YouTube, where you can actually watch Trey's show, That's Some Cheese. Check him out on there as well. All right, Jay law Lincoln Riley has left Oklahoma. Apparently the wind and him went sweeping down the plane, but he decided to pack up his game and head out west. I can't blame him. <laughs> Even further west. <laughs> For real. He he was uh he was there to claim some land in Oklahoma and then the gold rush opened up in California. Now see, here here's the thing. Now they're, they're 10 and 2 right now, correct? Yes. They they yeah. now he 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 benched Spencer yeah. Rattler Snake yeah or Caleb Williams that's working out for him that's making him look good but he's like you know what I don't want to do this no more well here's a big thing if you can't win in the Big Twelve do you want to go compete in the SEC where Oklahoma's moving to do you want to com- so. like you could compete for recruits because obviously they do. But you can't, you can't, you like you're not even winning in the Big Twelve. the The Big Twelve championship is between Baylor and Oklahoma State. Like, you 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 can't beat those teams. You can't make it to that stage and then make it to the college football playoff where you've been continuously embarrassed in your coaching tenure. And then not only that, but you you'd have to compete against freaking Nick Saban, Kirby Smart in Georgia, uh, a host Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. Um, uh, I, I won't be uh, egocentric and, and mention Sam Pittman at University of Arkansas. <laughs> okay. So I won't mention that because Arkansas is not at that level yet. But even Jimbo Fisher like didn't have a great year, eight and four, I think, with Texas A&M. But Texas A&M gets all the big Texas recruits, which is like the number one recruiting spot in the country. Why would you want to go there and compete against that and preserve – Well, we'll get to coaching legacy here in a second, but preserve your coaching legacy and further it by going and trying to rebuild one of the most historical, prestigious programs that has been an absolute disaster for like 15, 20 years. Ever since Pete Carroll left that the USC has been a disaster and underwhelming player in the college football sphere when, again, they're like one of the biggest programs in the country or at least they were for many years up until the previous decade yeah and i I, what's crazy to me though is he's doing this just as the season is winding down so i mean you couldn't wait 
But well, here's, I guess here's you got to strike while too. the iron's hot. Do you know exactly what he got offered to come and coach USC? Let me, uh, let me, let me. You actually have weather out here. It's not just planes of nothing. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Okay. Tell, tell, tell me what, what, what was it that enticed Mr. All right. Lincoln yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. I got, it, I got it. All right. Lincoln Riley, USC contract details. This is from Robert uh, Hefner, the fifth. Don't know exactly Hughes who this kid? is, but is <laughs> no, kid? but uh, uh, shout out Carl Heiser. He, he put this tweet um, in the slacks, so, which is where I got it. All right. $110 million contract. Woo! Um, USC, so the university, is buying both of his homes in Norman, Oklahoma for $500,000 over asking price. So it's a $1 million bonus on top of whatever the cost is of his homes that he has. They could be like, they could be, they could be half a million dollar homes. And so that's, 500,000 that he's getting each. So that's a million for each $500,000 home, then an extra million on top. So it's, it's a million dollar instant bonus because they're buying his homes. They are, the university is buying him a $6 million home to live in, in LA. And then the piece de resistance here, unlimited use of the team's private jet 24 seven, for him and his family. Use it at any time to go anywhere. For free. Why would you not? Drop everything in the middle of the season and say, hey, Peace. That's enough for me. Deuces, bitches. Like, is, I don't even think this man is paying taxes on his home in California. <laughs> that alone is going to save him a ton of money. Like, I, because the because the university is buying it, so I think it's like it falls under the it's a, university. It's a write off. It's a write off. It's, like, it's, it's a write off for the university because it's like it's they're basically it's like staff housing for six million dollars. So, so essentially, wow, that is crazy. This guy, <laughs> wow, this guy got the sweetest gig in life. <laughs> and and then if I were Mike Tomlin, I'd be like, damn, I should have taken that like, job. Yeah, and and here's the thing too about Oklahoma. Because their recruits and current players have been leaving in droves. It was like every hour after that announcement, there was a new player that had put out a like a graphic of them. And it's like, I love the University of Oklahoma, but I'm enter entering the transfer portal. Or a recruit, a five-star recruit's like, I'm decommitting and reopening my recruitment. Um, and I would feel bad for Oklahoma, but oh my gosh, they have been the most unbearable group of people out there. And there's this one specific Twitter profile that has how many followers is it? Yeah, scroll up here real quick. Okay. Has almost 13,000 followers. They are just being so they are being overly dramatic about this. Like, listen. So it's called Sooner Recruiting. That's their name. Okay. And it's it's not affiliated with the school in any way. It's just a fan, and they call themselves Sooner Recruiting. Like this, okay. loyalty, noun. One, the quality of being loyal. Two, a strong feeling of support or allegiance. And then it's talking about it's talking about Mark Stoops getting a uh, a new contract with uh, with Kansas uh, until uh, um, 2027, basically. Okay. And it's like the Stoops family. Synonyms: faithfulness. Fidelity, the Stoops family, anonyms, <laughs> abandonment, treachery, Lincoln Riley, <laughs> or let's find some other. Yeah, uh, let's find uh, some other other ones. Um, there was one I so sent. So they're a little salty, right? About yeah. That. There's one. There's one I sent. Yeah, here it is. I sent it in the same Slack message where I said, "Oh, you in shambles right now." And it's um, it's a it's a tweet. They quote tweeted a tweet talking about. Lincoln Riley and some and like a defensive coordinator, wide receiver coach, and a couple of other guys that he's bringing with him from Oklahoma to USC as a part of his coaching staff. Um, they said, like the thieves in the night that they are, reputation takes a lifetime to build and one Sunday in November to destroy. This is personal. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I can taste that salt lick from here. Dude. 
Good morning to everyone that doesn't go to church with recruits and their families just to leave them two weeks before signing day. <laughs> oh man, I and love. Then, and, and then I of course this. you know they're complaining because all the recruits, you know, all their big time players are either entering the transfer portal. Like Spencer Radler is yeah. entered the transfer portal, which I don't blame him because he went from Heisman favorite and potential number one overall pick. Uh, to he got, he got bench, bench. Right. yeah, he got yeah. benched for a true freshman, a true freshman, Caleb Williams, who I like, Caleb Williams, and he seems like he's going to be uh sticking around forever. Comes next, it's like, let me be first to officially say there's no way Lincoln Riley falls flat on his face at USC. Okay, so zero percent chance of failure. Um, yeah, they, they're just it's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've been like again. Yeah, That's crazy. crocodile tears sighting and Lincoln Riley's USC presser when thanking Oklahoma LOL save it. Like <laughs> they are saltier than the wow. tears that Lincoln Riley was shedding. Damn. Like there are worse things that have happened, okay? Dude, their tears I, are saltier than Steeler fans bro, right now. There are now. worse things that coaches have done. One thing in particular that I could think of, it's it's Oh, Cal- I don't know, Urban Meyer slapping that ass? Yes. Well, I, I'm talking about like coaches leaving. Oh, okay. Um, Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin's um, slip out was pretty bad. Um, Paterno. Yeah, yeah. Paterno. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Paterno. Like two things. Him twice. Him twice. Okay. First, when he leaves Atlanta, when he leaves the Falcons, left them in the middle of the season. Just right right and left the Falcons to take the right to take the Arkansas job. It was just like not only that. But a few years later, gets fired because he has a motorcycle accident, and he's got his like nineteen-year-old mistress with him, and lies to the university, lies to the AD, and he gets fired because of a morality clause that was in his contract. Oh man, there's so many. There are worse, worse things. things that have happened. This dude, okay? this dude made a conscious decision for his family, and folks are hating him for it. Like honestly, let's be real here. How many universities, how many head coaches show loyalty to a student and keep, let allow him to keep his scholarship if he gets hurt and can't play again? Not until not the Supreme many. Court made them to. Yeah, not until the Supreme Court made them. At least, at least allowed them to uh, um, make money off their likeness. You know, right. they, st- they still get no other benefits like insurance or something. Like, granted, they do get like great health care and they get basically a free ride but if that's something that's screwed them up for life it's like oh sorry well here's the thing though too there is no such thing as loyalty in our society when you have a job here's the bottom line everyone's like oh you should be loyal you should be loyal you should be loyal bro look at your job you die tomorrow they're replacing you within a week yeah they don't give a damn about you man no oh these these fan bases just make me laugh bro it's like also again you're going to Southern. You're going from Oklahoma. You're going from Oklahoma to Southern, to Southern California. California. Seriously, Come you're on. shocked by this. That that alone is like okay. I understand. That's like it's, saying you got a chance to be in Siberia or Miami yeah. Beach. And listen, man, this is a king's ransom. If I love Sam Pittman to death, okay, and he talks about how much Arkansas is the place that he wants to be, even when he originally left Arkansas to be the. O line coach for Arkansas to be the O line for Kirby Smart down in uh, in Georgia when Kirby Smart first got the job there. Him and his wife um, st- bought a home in Arkansas just so that way they could return home to Arkansas. And in, in the eventuality that he retired, they wanted to retire in Arkansas. If he right. got if he got offered one hundred ten million dollars, U.S. the whatever college, let's say it's U.S. UCLA, let's say it's another California school, in Southern California. <laughs> Offered him $110 million to buy his home for $500,000 over asking price. Bought him a $6 million home that he's probably not paying taxes on. And then unlimited use of a private jet for him and his family to go anywhere at any time that they want to. Deuces. I'd be like, Sam, I hate to see you go. But you like, stupid if you don't take you, that. You are stupid. You're an absolute idiot if you don't take I it. I like, don't think I like, want you to be coaching my team because you are like, moron. How can I trust you if you won't take that deal? How can I trust you when it's like third and like fourth and in inches, fourth and in goal at the one for the national championship game, and you're just like, 
I'm gonna punt. I can't trust you there. I can't trust you. If I can't Yo, trust you there, like if you can't, I don't know, man. And I'll tell you one thing right now. You know, Lincoln Riley's wife is like, if you don't take that job, I'm divorcing your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I will divorce you. I will. Like that, I will kill you. I will salt your corpse and burn it. Yeah, and and I mean. From the reports that I've seen, it appeared that like the rift between Riley and Oklahoma started when Oklahoma announced that they were going to make the move to the SEC, which he was clearly was against. against because here's here's the thing. Dude, I'm not going to try to go to a conference where I got Alabama, Georgia and Auburn to deal with. Yeah, well, it, I mean, like, here's the thing, too. It's like there are teams like if you were to take Ole Miss. Ole Miss has only lost, I think, twice this year. I think they're 10 and 2 right now. And they're not, they're not sniffing the playoff. They're not sniffing the national championship game. You put them in any other, take that exact same team, put them in the ACC, put them in the Big 12, put them in the Pac 12, put them in another power, any, any other. Well, to power be fair, be fair, Pitt is 10 and 2 as well. Yes, in but the ACC. I know, but here's here's the thing, too. Take Pitt and Ole Miss and put them together. Who do you think comes out on top? Oh, miss nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten, and you have to give you have to give Pitt the one because anything because can happen Kenny in football. Pe well, because Kenny Pickett is freaking amazing. Yeah, he's gonna fall. He's gonna fall. He's gonna and, fall. And as our as our boy Josh Taylor does like to point out, he was correct in the in Pitt upsetting Clemson uh, <laughs> game. So it, it has happened. It's happened he in the was. past. But all all I'm saying is this: it's like the SEC is such tougher competition like arkansas this year was a mid-level sec team spanked the crap out of texas now that doesn't mean much because texas has not been great that year but texas got the still. everlasting crap kicked out of them out of a what was considered a low level now maybe a mid-level after going eight and four this year sec team they fit no arkansas doubt. fin no arkansas doubt. finished four and four in conference play all four losses came from within the SEC. No doubt. A couple no of doubt. those games being really close. Uh, one point loss to Ole Miss. They hung in there with Alabama. Uh, the Auburn game was a, was just a terrible game. That was a terrible performance by them. Um, but no, but no, that's just what I'm saying. Like even Texas A&M, Texas A&M also mid level eight and four. I would take them over most teams that are in the championship games for their division this coming week, just because that's the type of level of play that's in the sec right you could you could be eight and four and still be the team to beat walking into any game in bowl season it just so happens sometimes you know they 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 lose which is obviously what happens which is why lincoln riley wants to stay in the big 12 you run through the big 12 you get to the college football playoff then anything can happen there now nothing has happened in his favor the times that right. he's been there but just saying just because how football works you know, any given Saturday, in this opinion, instead of Sunday, <laughs> Saturday, any given Saturday, in this example, you could win or you could lose. You could win or you could lose. You could, you could, the ball could bounce a little bit to the left on a fumble instead of a right, and your guy falls on it instead of their guy. You know, maybe there's a there's a gust of wind that just all of a sudden pops up on a field goal that could be the difference between you know just sneaking it in or doinking it right off the crossbar. Center farts in the face of the quarterback as he snaps the ball, and bam, fumble, fumble. Yeah. Scrap for the ball. Ball's loose. Bowman from and, the mouth. <laughs> hey, I ain't mad at Lincoln Riley for getting that getting paid. I ain't no. mad at him at and all. Again, oh you fans, Get you guys are gonna yourselves. be fine because I feel like you guys have been competitive my entire life in in college Seems football. Like it. It's just you guys could never get over the hump. Yep. And you weren't gonna get over the hump this year neither. Nope. And when your coach gets off for the bag, you cannot blame him. Nope. For not at all. Not at all. Especially when the team, when the school is moving in a direction that he's not comfortable with. You, you can't expect that. No. All right, guys. That's going to be it for the uh, Tandemonium Sports Show for this week. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Tandemonium VSM. If you want to see or hear anything that Jackson Moss to say, follow him on Twitter at JLaw1995. If you want to follow my personal Twitter, at Brian Tan author. Um, granted, I'm not talking a lot of sports over there, more talking about my weight loss journey and blah, blah, blah. That's about it. But hey, you got something you want to hear what I think? 
you can get me right there. Go to vendettasportsmedia.com where you can get all of our content, all of our articles, all of our shows, everything. Follow us on Twitter as well, media underscore vendetta. Let me pull it up. Where is it at? There it is. <laughs> media underscore vendetta. See what's going on because there's always something interesting, especially when Trey gets a hair on his ass about something. It's always a good time to be had. And make sure you, you follow us on all your social media. I already went through them all. I'll go through them one last time. Subscribe to us on Twitch. If you got Prime, you should be able to do that for free. Twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. Look us up on Facebook, Vendetta Sports Media. Pretty much anywhere else, VendettaSportsMedia.com. Media underscore Vendetta on Twitter. TikTok, VendettaSportsMedia.com. And even podcast, at pods, at Vendetta Sports, at 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 pods underscore vendetta. All right. Next week, we'll be back at full strength. Courtney Plummer will be with us. So hopefully you'll be with us as well. We'll have a lot more to talk about. We'll talk some, um, we'll, well, I think next week we'll talk some conference, um, some cal- some college football conference championships because that's where we're at right now. And um, apparently Brian Kelly has been hired as the, uh, the yep. next LSU football coach. Yeah, he left so. Notre Dame after all these years because, again, Notre Dame can't get over the hump going nope. to, but he's taking on the challenge. Kudos to him. We'll see what he's made out of there. Absolutely. And um, yeah, we'll talk some of that. We'll see about that's, getting. That's Trey's boy, Brian Kelly. That's, that's Trey's, that's Trey's guy. That's Trey's, that's guy. Trey's guy. Yes. Yes. That's sir. He was, he was hyping him up big time in the college football chat. Fair enough. All right. With that being said, guys, that's a wrap. We'll see you next week. I'm Brian Tan. He's Jackson law. It's a Tandemonium Sports Show here on Vendetta Sports Media. See you next week. We'll see you next week.